This is my intermediate algebra course. Today we're going to learn how to convert between the three forms of a quadratic expression. If you haven't done the homework completely and correctly from the last class, do that homework before watching this video. In the previous classes, we learned how to graph quadratic expressions, but it's also important to know how to convert between the three forms. So here's the three forms. You have this information already, or you should have it in your uh, files, but you can take a screenshot of that if you uh, need a refresher. And so uh, we're going to start by converting from vertex form to uh, standard and then standard to intercept form. So it says here, write the form of each quadratic expression below. So we want to write this form, whatever form it is, and then we're going to convert to the other two forms. So the form of this expression, as I mentioned, is vertex form. So we're just going to write vertex, and that's part of the answer, so we're going to rectangle that. And then step two, we're going to convert to standard form. So I'm going to title this step standard so we know what we're doing. I'm going to rewrite that expression up there so we know where we're starting. And to convert to standard form, I'm going to expand that power expression. Remember, when you raise something to the second power, that just means that you're multiplying it by itself. So we're taking this x minus 1, and we're multiplying it by itself. And be aware that this 2 is not part of that power expression. It's multiplied into the overall expression, but it's not part of the uh, power expression. So now we need to multiply. And in order to multiply two binomials, you have to, uh, well, you don't have to, but we always use FOIL to, to remember how to do it. F stands for first terms. We're going to multiply x times x is x squared. And this should just be a review for you because you learned this in my beginning algebra course. And we also did this in, my, uh, in previous classes in this course. Then we're going to do x times negative 1 is negative x, and then negative 1 times x is negative x, and then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So this is uh, first terms. We multiplied x times x, and then we did outside terms, x times negative 1, and then we did inside terms, one, negative 1 times x, and then we did, uh, I ran out of colors, but you get the point. If you need review on FOIL, you can just go to my beginning algebra course where it talks about multiplying binomials. We still have that 8 out there, so I have to remember to write that 8. <clears throat> so now what we need to do is combine these terms here because those are like terms. So negative x minus x is negative 2x. That's just basic algebra. And at this point, we're going to multiply this, uh, these blue terms in here by negative 2 using the distributive property or distributive rule, whatever you want to call it, or the distribution property. So negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 2x is positive 4x. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. So again, I multiplied 2 times x squared, then 2 times negative 2x, and 2 times uh, one. Actually, I mean negative two times all those all those terms. And so now we can combine these terms here. Negative two plus eight is six, and that is standard form. So we took vertex form, which you see in yellow up here and we converted it to standard form, which you see in yellow down here. OK, and so now on to uh, step number three. Now we're going to convert to intercept form. So I'm going to title that step intercept. And to do this, we're going to start with standard form, the form we left off with because that's just the easiest way to do it. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to factor out negative 2. And a lot of students, they don't like factoring. They don't like to see factoring. But, uh, you know, factoring is something you did in my beginning algebra course. And if I remember correctly, you probably did it in, in this course also. I think I reviewed some of that possibly. Now, why does factoring work? Well, because if we use the distributed property to multiply back, we get negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. And negative 2 times negative 2x is positive 4x. And negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. So we're just, it's the opposite of the uh, distribution rule. Okay, so the reason we did that is because now we can factor this inner term really easily. So we get y equals negative 2. And where we left off was uh, we had a, a quadratic expression. This expression here is a quadratic. And so it's going to be pretty simple to, to factor. What we're going to do is we're going to say what, what two numbers multiply to negative 3 and add up to negative 2. What two numbers multiply to negative 3 and add up to negative 2? And the answer is negative 3 and 1. If you multiply negative 3 and, and 1, you get negative 3. And if you add them together, you get negative 2. And at that point, we're done. Now, be aware that if there's a coefficient here, then you would ask what two numbers multiply to negative 3, but they would not necessarily add up to negative 2. You, you just have to foil back to check your answer and use trial and error. So be aware of that. But uh, that is intercept form. You may recognize that as intercept form. So we're just going to rectangle that. So again, we did three things. We converted, or first we identified the form that the original expression is in, vertex form. And then we took that and converted it to standard form. And then we took standard form and converted it to intercept form. So we're converting to all, all different forms there. OK, so let's do a couple more of these before you try one on your own. Step one, identify the form that it's already in. And of course, that's a vertex form. So that's part of the answer. And now we're going to convert to standard form. So I'm going to rewrite, just so you know where we're starting from. I don't want any confusion whatsoever. And so now we're going to take that power expression and we're going to expand it. Um, to do that, we're going to use FOIL. So x times x is x squared, x times 3 is 3x. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 3 is 9. Now, just to be clear, f is x times x, that's x squared, then x times 3, that's outside, that's o, and then inside is 3 times x, and then l, last terms, is 3 times 3. That's the FOIL acronym that we used in previous classes. And the reason I didn't mention, but the, the reason that uh, we keep these parentheses is because the 6 is still multiplied into all these terms, you see. But before we multiply the 6, we're going to go ahead and combine these like terms to make the expression simpler. Okay, and then we're going to use the distributed property to multiply the 6 into all these terms. So 6 times x squared is 6x squared, 6 times 6x is 36x, and 6 times 9 is 54. Fifty-four minus twenty-four is thirty. And that is standard form. So we succeeded in converting from vertex form to standard form. OK, so now step three, we're going to convert to uh, intercept form. So I'm going to title that step intercept, just so we know what we're doing. And I'm going to start 
where we left off in standard form because that's just the easiest way to do it. And I see that there's uh, a common factor in each of these terms, it's six. So I'm gonna factor out six. And then I'm going to factor the the inner terms there. Maybe I should color code that. So that trinomial is becoming this, this product of binomials. So what two numbers multiply to five and add up to six? Well, it's five times one. Five times one is five and five plus one is six. And that is intercept form. So there you go. Again, we converted, uh, we identified the form of the original expression, vertex form, then we converted it to standard form, then we converted it to intercept form in yellow. So let's do one more of these problems before you try one on your own. Again, step number one is to identify the form that it's already in. And that's vertex form, of course. And then we're going to change to standard form of a quadratic expression. And to do that, I'm going to expand the power expression. And in order to do that, we have to use FOIL. x times x is x squared. Then x times negative 4 is negative 4x. And negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Again, that's you can remember that algorithm uh, by using the acronym FOIL. That's something that you've done many, many times in my curriculum. If you're a little rusty on it, that's okay. If you've never seen it, that's not okay. That's probably a, a, a bad thing. Okay, so now we can, we can do two things. We can combine these like terms to get negative 8x, and we can combine these terms. 16 minus 4 is 12. So now we have standard form. All right, and we're now going to convert uh, from standard form to intercept form. And just to make it clear where I'm starting here, I'm starting from standard form. That's just the easiest way to do it. And we don't have a, a coefficient here, so we're not going to, you know, we don't have common factors in any of these three terms other than one, so we're, we can't really factor anything out because there's no coefficient uh, on this, on this uh, x minus 4 squared term. So we can just go ahead and factor, and we get uh, uh, what two numbers multiply to 12 and add up to negative 8. So that's going to be negative 2 and negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12, and negative 2 plus negative 6 is negative 8. So that is intercept form. So again, we identified the form as vertex form, and we converted from vertex form to standard form, and then from standard form to intercept form. So I'm going to leave those three problems in the window, and I want you to try number four. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So step one is to identify the form that we're given, and that's vertex form. Step two, we're going to convert to standard form. And to do that, we're going to expand the power expression. So we have x minus 1 times x minus 1. That's what uh, raising to the second power means. You're multiplying something by itself. And then we have to use the, uh, the FOIL acronym to help us remember how to multiply 
two binomials. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And then we can just simplify. And then we're going to use the distributed property. And then we're going to combine the last terms. 2 minus 18 is negative 16. And so there you go. We converted to standard form. So if you got that answer, good job. So now we're going to convert to intercept form. So I'm going to rewrite the expression we left off with in the previous step. And uh, I'm going to factor out a 2 because I can see that there's a factor of 2 in all these terms. And now we're just going to factor that quadratic. And what two numbers multiply to negative 8 and add up to negative 2? That's going to be negative 4 and positive 2. So I want you to try number 5, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Um, so step 1, we're going to identify the form that it's already in. That's vertex form. Step two, we're going to change to standard form. And to do that, we're going to expand the power expression. And we're going to use the acronym, uh, the FOIL acronym. X times X is X squared. X times negative 6 is negative 6X. Six negative 6 times X is negative 6X. And negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. And forgot my parentheses there. <clears throat> and now we can combine the, the six x's. And we're going to distribute the negative three. And negative 3 times 36 is negative 108. And now we're ready to combine negative 108 and, and 3. And we do that, we get negative 105. So that is standard form. We converted from vertex form to standard form. Now we're going to convert to uh, intercept form. And we're going to pick up where we left off on standard form. That's just the easiest way to do it. But before I factor, I'm going to, well, before we uh, factor the quadratic, I'm going to factor out a common uh, uh, factor, a greatest common factor. So how can I do that? Well, if you distribute back, you get negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times negative 12x is positive 36x. And negative 3 times 35 is negative 105. We're just going backwards from the uh, distribution rule. So uh, now we're ready to factor that quadratic. And what two numbers multiply to 35 and add up to negative 12? Well, that's going to be negative 7 and negative 5. So that is intercept form. If you got that answer, good job. OK, so you're going to do one more of these problems. I want you to try number 6. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So what form is this in? It's in vertex form. And 
now we're going to convert to the other two forms. We're going to start by converting to standard form. And to do that, we're going to expand the power expression. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is x. 1 times x is x. 1 times 1 is 1. And we can combine the x's to get 2x. And we can combine 1 and negative 25 to get negative 24. And that is standard form. And so now we're going to convert to intercept form. And to do that, we're just going to take standard form and factor. We're going to factor that quadratic. What two numbers multiply to negative 24 and add up to 2? Well, that's going to be positive 6 and negative 4. So that is intercept form. So if you got those answers, good job. Again, all those problems, uh, we started with the vertex form and converted to standard form and then intercept form. Well, now we're going to start with intercept form and convert to standard form and then vertex form. So step one, we're going to identify the form it's already in. That's intercept form. And then we're going to convert to standard form. And to convert to standard form, we just use uh, we use foil. The the five is just going to stay out there. I want to make it clear that five is just staying out there. X times x is x squared. X times negative 1 is negative x. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. And negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. And negative x minus 5x is negative 6x. And um, now that we expanded uh, part of that expression, we can now distribute the 5. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times negative 6x is negative 30x. And 5 times 5 is 25. So that is standard form. We converted from intercept form to standard form. Okay, so now we're going to convert to vertex form. And what you're going to find is that this takes takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of effort and thought um, to convert to vertex form. It's easiest to start with standard form. So I'm just going to rewrite what we left off with in the previous step. And to convert to vertex form, you have to complete the square. Uh, there may be a slightly easier way to do it. But uh, to get practice completing the square, I'm going to require you to complete the square. But remember, when you complete the square, uh, uh, before you do that, you have to get rid of this coefficient here. We cannot complete the square unless you get rid of this coefficient here in most cases. So we're, we're going to do something kind of strange. Uh, normally, we would have a 0 over here, but now we have a y. So to get rid of, uh, well, first of all, to get rid of the 5, we have to divide both sides by 5. So we're going to do that. But on the left side of the equation, we have to write this expression because we don't have 0 anymore. And uh, it's important to keep that y over 5 as we go through the problem here. And remember, whenever you're dividing a polynomial by a, by a monomial, um, you, you just divide each term. So 5x squared divided by 5, well, that's just going to be x squared. Negative 30x divided by 5 is negative 6x. And 25 divided by 5 is 5. And at this point, um, well, we got rid of the coefficient of x squared. But now we have to complete the square over here. But in order to do that, 
I'm going to take that 5 and put it on the other side. There's uh, different ways to do this. If you look in a textbook or on the internet and you see slightly different ways, sometimes they don't put the, the, the 5 on the other side. Sometimes they just move it over here, but it just depends on you know who's doing it. I think it's easier for you to understand if we just move everything on the other side based on what we've done in the previous uh, classes. So now we have to complete the square, or we're ready to, we're ready to complete the square. Um, and remember, we have to add a number to both sides of the equation, but we don't know what number to add. So we take the coefficient of x and we do two things to it. We divide it by 2, so negative 6 divided by 2 equals negative 3. And then we take that number, negative 3, and we square it. And this is the number that we need to complete the squared, uh, 9. So I'm now going to add 9 to uh, this expression over here. And this is now a perfect square. But the problem is we can't just add 9 to one side of the equation because that makes it unbalanced. It's not going to be a true equation anymore. So if I add 9 to this side, I have to add 9 to this side also. OK, so now we have a perfect square over here. And we're going to factor this. To factor it just the way you did in uh, previous problems in this, uh, well, yeah, we had problems here where we had standard form. And we had to factor it to intercept form. So we're going to factor just like we did in previous problems. So what two numbers multiply to 9 and add up to negative 6? Well, that's going to be negative 3 and negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. Now we're going to add negative 5 and uh, 9 to get 4. And then uh, we can go ahead and convert this product of binomials to a power expression. And at this point, we're out of room. But remember, when you multiply something by itself, you can write that in power notation. Uh, when we use vertex form, we're using power notation, so we need to do that. OK, so we're out of room, so that means we'll just use an arrow. And we're going to uh, put the 4 on the other side of the equation. So we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. And at this point, we're almost done. Um, we just need to get y by itself. We need to isolate y. Because remember, in vertex form, well, in, in all these forms, y is isolated. You see, y is by itself over here in vertex form. We need to get y by itself. That's just the way, that's just, that's just what these forms are. They're defined to be expressions where y is by itself. But you see, y is not by itself here. The 5 is under it. So, And again, the reason we had to put all that stuff next to y is we had to get it out of the way. Now again, there are other ways to do it where you don't have to put the numbers on this side, but I'm just doing it that way because it's uh, probably going to be more familiar to you based on what we've done in previous classes. And so now we just have to multiply both sides by 5 to get the y by itself. And so I'm going to rewrite. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by 5, both sides of the uh, equation. And it's very important to understand that you're multiplying everything on this side of the equation by 5. So that 5's cancel out, and you're just left with y equals. And now it's very important to understand we have to use the distributive property. So 5 times this expression here, and then 5 times negative 4. So we, just, we can just put the 5 right in front of the power expression, and 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. So again, we multiplied 5 times this expression, and then we multiplied it by negative 4. That's just the distributive property. Now you might say, well, wait a second, why don't we, why don't we just put this 5 inside here? Well, you can't really do that. 
because remember order of operations tells us to square first. Um, you know the five doesn't really have anything to do with this square or the, the, the second power. But anyway that is now vertex form. So you see that when you're changing to vertex form the process is, is a little bit more involved. Okay so let's try a couple more of those before you do one on your own. Um, so we're starting with intercept form again. So let's first identify the form. That's part of the answer. And then step two, we're going to convert to standard form. So I'm going to label that step standard so we know what the point of the step is. And I'm just going to rewrite to you so I'm absolutely sure that you know where we're starting from. And so now we're going to use FOIL. x times x is x squared, x times 1 is x, and 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 1 is 3. I just use FOIL there, and now we can combine the like terms. x plus 3x is 4x. And now we can use the distribution property. Negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times 4x is negative 8x. And negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And that is standard form. OK, so we converted from intercept form to standard form. Now we're going to go to vertex form. And this is the step that takes quite a bit more thought. And to convert to vertex form, we're going to start where we left off in standard form. And remember, to, to convert to vertex form, you have to complete the square. But we can't complete the square unless we get rid of this coefficient on the x squared term first. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite and you don't really have to rewrite. Notice that I'm rewriting on some of these steps. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I'm just doing it so that you can uh, see what is going on here. Um, you know, rewriting is, is something that we did in pre-algebra, so it's not really necessary that you do that here. I just want you to be absolutely clear what's going on with each step. So now we get x squared and positive 4x and positive 3. And again, we just uh, divided each term. So negative 2x squared divided by negative 2 is x squared. Negative 8x divided by negative 2 is positive 4x. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. OK, so now. We're going to put the 3 on the other side. And now we're ready to complete the square. We have not completed the square yet. We just, we've just prepared the equation to complete the square. So now we're going to complete the square. But we need to know what number to add to both sides. Remember, when you complete the square, you take the coefficient of x, divide by 2, and then square it. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then 2 squared is 4. So we're going to add 4, not just to one side. We're going to add it to both sides. And now this is a perfect square. That was the whole point of that. If you factor that quadratic expression, you ask what two numbers multiply to 4 and add up to 4. Well, the only option is 2 and 2. And so all we did was just factor that. We're using a lot of things that we learned in previous classes in this course and my beginning algebra course. That's just how math works. It builds and builds and builds. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. And now we're out of room. That's OK. We can just use an arrow to go up here. And so we're going to take x plus 2 times x plus 2, and we're going to put it in power notation. So I'm going to change it to x plus 2 squared. And it equals y over negative 2 plus 1. 
And so now all we have to do is just isolate y because we put all those numbers on on the other side of the equation. But you know, standard or vertex form requires you to to isolate y just as all the other forms do. So now we're going to subtract one from both sides. And notice that I don't rewrite when I subtract one. That's because I don't I'm not worried that you don't you're not going to understand how to put one on the other side. But in the next step, I'm going to rewrite because I do get a little worried that you may not know, or you may get kind of confused about what we're doing in the next step. So now we're going to isolate y by multiplying both sides by negative 2, and that's going to cancel out the negative 2 under the, under the y. But it's very important to understand that when you multiply the expression on the left side of the equation, you have to multiply the entire thing. Now the right side of the equation, we're just left with y, negative 2's cancel out, and you have to use the distribution rule, negative 2 times uh, x plus 2 squared, and negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. So that is vertex form. And you might say, well, this stuff seems pretty involved. Well, that's true. I could make these problems a lot harder. So, you know... Uh, the, these are actually pretty easy, but uh, you know this is this is uh, advanced mathematics. So this this stuff does require a lot, but that's why there are so many prerequisites for this course. Okay, so now uh, let's do one more of these before you try one on your own. Um, let's identify the form that this expression is already in. It's an intercept form. And then we're going to convert to standard form. This problem is going to be easier because the coefficient of the product of binomials is just 1. a is 1. Remember, we call that constant a. So what that means is uh, all we have to do is use FOIL, and then we'll be done pretty much. x times x is x squared. x times negative 9 is negative 9x. 1 times x is x. And 1 times negative 9 is negative 9. <coughs> Negative 9x plus x is negative 8x. And there you go. We're in standard form now. So that was pretty easy. Um, now we're going to... i got to start writing a little smaller here. Now we're going to convert to uh, vertex form. That's the, the form that requires a little more thought. And I'm going to pick up where we left off in standard form. That's just the easiest way to do it. And I, we have to uh, complete the square in order to put it in vertex form. We have to get rid of the coefficient of x squared, but there is no coefficient of x squared, so we don't have to do that stuff. But I'm going to take this 9 and put it, put it on the other side. You know, just get it out of the way. And now we're ready to complete the square. So remember, to complete the square, you take this number, you do two things to it. You divide by 2, and then you square it. You need to remember that, because in the next problems, you're going to have to do this on your own. So negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So let's add 16 to both sides. And that now completes the square for the expression on the right side of the equation. So this is now a perfect square. Why did we add 16 over here also? Well, because we have to. If we're going to add 16 to both sides of an equation, or if we're going to add it to one side of the equation, we have to add it to the other side of the equation also. So over here, uh, 9 plus 16 is 25. And over here, we have a perfect square, so we can go ahead and factor it to, perfect, to a perfect square. What two numbers multiply to 16 and add up to negative 8? That's just going to be negative 4 and negative 4. It's a perfect square. The factors are the same, so we can put it in power notation. That's the whole point of doing this. We need a perfect square to, uh, to write vertex form. So now we're just going to take the 25 and put it on the other side of the equation. And there you go. We have vertex form. That problem was easier, again, because the coefficient, or, or A, that constant that we usually call a is 1. Okay, you can see up here, if my computer will catch up, the constant there was 1. All right, so I'm going to leave those in the window, 
and I want you to try number 10. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So first, let's identify the form that it's already in, and that is intercept form. And now we're going to convert to standard form, so I'm going to label this step. And just to be clear what we're doing here, you don't really have to rewrite, but I'm just going to rewrite so we know where we're starting. So, and now to convert to standard form, we're going to use FOIL. x times x is x squared, x times negative 4 is negative 4x, 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And now we can combine <clears throat> these terms here, negative 4x plus 2x is negative 2x. And now we're going to multiply negative 4 times x squared is negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times negative 2x is positive 8x. Negative 4 times negative 8 is positive 32. And there you go. We now have standard form. So now we're going to convert to vertex form. Um, to do that, it's easiest to start with standard form, which luckily we have because we just converted to standard form. And remember, you cannot complete the square in most cases unless you get rid of this coefficient here. So to get rid of that coefficient, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. And I'm going to show all these steps here just to be absolutely sure that you understand what's going on. So I, I rewrote everything. And the y over here doesn't go away. That's just, you know, it's not, it's not 0 like in the previous problems. We've got to keep it there. So now we're dividing each one of those terms, and we get the, uh, the following expression. And um, so now we need to complete the square. So in order to do that, I'm going to get that negative 8 out of the way by putting it on the right side of the equation. And um, to complete the square, you take the coefficient of x and you do two things to it. You divide by 2 and then square it. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So we're going to add 1 to both sides. Now this is a perfect square. So now we're going to factor it. What two numbers multiply to 1 and add up to negative 2? Well, that's just negative 1 and negative 1. And 8 plus 1 is 9. Now we can write the product of binomials as a power expression. And we're out of room, so we're going to have to go up here. The only thing that we need to do at this point is isolate the y, because remember, in vertex form, actually in all these forms, y is isolated. See, y is by itself over here. We put all the numbers next to y, now we have to get them away from y now. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. And that puts 9 on the other side. And we have a negative 4 under the y. So all we have to do is get rid of that negative 4 under the y. And I'm going to be very careful when I do this that you understand exactly what's going on. Um, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 4 because that's going to cancel out the 4 on the right side of the equation. If my pencil would work right in there. So we're going to multiply by negative 4 and you can see that uh, the negative 4's cancel out on this side, and we have to use the distribution property. Negative 4 times that power expression. 
and a negative 4 times negative 9 is positive 36. And so that is vertex form. So if we got that answer, good job. Let me just rectangle that. Okay, so those are the answers. If you got number 10 right, good job. If you didn't get it right, that's okay. Just go back and figure out what you did wrong. All right, on to number 11. I'm going to keep uh, number 8 in the window while you try number 11. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So first we're going to identify the form that it's in. It's in intercept form. That's part of the solution, so I'm going to rectangle that. And now we're going to convert to standard form. So I'm going to title that step standard so we know what we're doing. And just to be absolutely clear where we're starting, I'm going to rewrite that expression. And we're going to keep the 3 out there and use FOIL. x times x is x squared. x times 6 is 6x. X, 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 6 is 12. Now we're going to combine like terms inside. So 6x plus 2x is 8x. Three times x squared is three x squared. Three times eight x is twenty-four x, and three times twelve is thirty-six. So we're now in standard form. Um, now we're going to convert to vertex form, and this is the step which requires uh, quite a bit of uh, calculations here. Um, and to convert to vertex form, we start with uh, what we left off on in the previous step. Um, standard form. So we, in order to convert to vertex form, we have to complete the square. But we can't do that if we have a coefficient in, in, uh, on the x squared term. So we're going to have to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of that. And whoops, I forgot to... I think that 6 disappeared there. It should be 36. And so we're going to divide both sides by 3. And we're going to put the 12 on the other side of the equation. And now we're ready to complete the square. And if you want to complete the square, you take the coefficient of x, divide by 2, and square it. And when you do that, you get 16. So we're going to add 16 to both sides. I'm going to move this over a little bit. And then we get, on the left side of the equation, we get positive 4. And then this is now a perfect square. So we can factor it. And what two numbers multiply to 16 and add up to 8? Well, that's 4 and 4. So we're out of room. That's OK. We can just go up here. And we have y over 3 plus 4. And we can put that uh, product of binomials into compact power form. So x plus 4 times x plus 4 is x plus 4 squared. And just making sure that that's uh, correct. 
Okay, so now all we have to do is just uh, isolate the Y. So to do that, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. And then we're going to multiply both sides by 3. And to do that, we're going to uh, we're going to have to use the distribution rule on the right side of the equation. So the threes cancel out on the left side of the equation <clears throat> and we have 3x plus 4 squared on the right side of the equation and 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. So there you go, that is vertex form. Alright, so if you got those answers, good job. I'm going to leave number 11 in the window and I want you to try number 12 and when you come back we'll do it together. Alright, we're back. So first we're going to identify the form of the original expression that we're given, and that's obviously intercept form. And now we're going to convert to standard form, so I'm going to label this step standard so we know what the point of the step is, and we're going to use uh, FOIL to help us multiply. And so the negative one, this is just a negative one, remember when you have a negative sign and no number next to it, it's just considered to be negative 1. x times x is x squared, x times negative 7 is negative 7x, negative 3 times x is negative 3x, and negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21. Again, that's, that's how we multiply binomials. We use the FOIL acronym to help us remember the algorithm, the easiest way to do it. Negative 7x minus 3x is negative 10x. And now, negative 1 times x squared is negative x squared. Again, that's negative 1 here. Remember that. Negative 1 times negative 10x is positive 10x. Negative 1 times positive 21 is negative 21. So now, we are in standard form. That was the easy part of the problem. So now, we're going to convert to vertex form. This requires completing the square, and that's why it's a little more involved. Um, so I'm going to start with standard form. That's just the easiest way to do it. And luckily we have standard form. That's where we left off. And so we're going to complete the square. That's what we have to do to change it to vertex form. But we can't have a coefficient on the x squared term when we complete the square. So we're going to have to we're going to have to get rid of that negative in front of the x squared term. And so to do that, we're going to divide both sides by negative 1. And so really all that does is just change all the signs on the left side of the equation. Now as you're watching this, you might think to yourself, "Isn't I, I can kind of see some shortcuts here. Well, yeah, you probably can. That's good. You can take shortcuts if you need to. But I can't take shortcuts because, you know, I'm uh, showing you, how, showing students how to do this stuff. Um, I would like to take, you know, probably 10 shortcuts. I can do it a lot faster, but then, you know, I wouldn't be showing you how to do the problem. And students would complain. Okay, so now we're going to put the 21 on the other side. And... Um, we're going to complete the square. We take this number, divide by 2, and square it, and you get 25. So we're going to add 25 to both sides. We did that because now this is a perfect square. And we added it to the other side because the equation is not going to remain true unless we do that. So now, uh, and by the way, I didn't mention y divided by negative 1. That's just negative y. You know, you, you, just, you can just write it as negative y. Negative 21 plus 25 is positive 4. 
And what two numbers multiply to 25 and add up to negative 10? That's going to be negative 5 and negative 5, and that is a perfect square. That's how we designed it, so you can write it in square notation. Now we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. And we can divide both sides by negative 1 to get rid of this negative here. Again, y has to be isolated. It's not isolated. There's a negative next to it. So we can divide both sides by negative 1. But we're, and, and these problems, we're used to multiplying both sides by a number. So I'm just going to do it that way. I'm just going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So times negative 1 over here and times negative 1 on the left side of the equation. I'm going to move this over a little bit. So times negative 1 over here. And we're out of room, but that's OK. We can just go up here. Remember to always use an arrow. And then we're going to use the uh, distribution property. So negative 1 times x minus 5, you can just write that as negative x minus 5 squared. And negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4, again, using the distribution rule equals y, and then we're done. We're now in vertex form. So if you got that answer, that's very good. Good job. As you can see, this stuff is pretty involved. Again, we're getting into some advanced math here, so if it seems pretty complicated, then you're right. This stuff is, is advanced math when it comes to the high school curriculum. Um, all right, so we converted from vertex form to standard form and then intercept form in the first six problems we did. In the second uh, grouping of six problems, we converted from intercept form to standard form and then to vertex form. That's what we just did. And now we're going to start at standard form. And we're going to convert to uh, uh, intercept form and then vertex form. So first we're going to identify the form that we're given, that's standard form. Then we're going to change to intercept form. And there's a couple different ways to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and factor out the greatest common factor from all those terms, because I see that there is a common factor. And now we can just factor the quadratic expression. What two numbers multiply to 8 and add up to negative 6? Well, that's going to be negative 4 and negative 2. And that is now intercept form. So now we're going to convert to a vertex form. And to convert to vertex form, we're going to start with standard form. So I'm going to rewrite the standard form up there. Usually we start off where we, we left in the previous step, but in this case, it's going to be better to start with uh, standard form there. And in order to convert to vertex form, we have to complete the square, but we can't complete the square if we have a coefficient on the x squared term. So we have to get rid of that. And to do that, we're going to divide both sides by 2. And we have x squared minus 6x plus 8 is equal to y over 2. Then I'm going to take the 8 and put it on the other side. And now we're ready to complete the square. Remember, it's always this number, the coefficient of x, divided by 2 and squared. So when you do that, you get 9. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. This is now a perfect square. So what two numbers multiply to 9 and add up to negative 6? Well, that's obviously negative 3 and negative 3. And negative 8 plus 9 is 1. And we can write x 
minus 3 times x minus 3 in power notation. And now all we have to do is just get y by itself. So we can subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. And now we just have one more step. We have to get that 2 away from the, from the y. So let me just rewrite that expression. And now we're going to, let me get this arrow out of the way. I know that's going to get in the way there. We're going to multiply both sides by 2. We don't really need parentheses here, but I'm just going to write them. OK, so using the distribution rule, we get our final answer that is now in vertex form. So again, we started in standard form and we converted to intercept form, then we converted to vertex form. Let's do a couple more of these before you try one on your own. <clears throat> so first let's identify the form. Obviously it's in standard form. That's part of the solution. And then we're going to convert to intercept form. And like I said, you could just try to factor in this form, but it's always good to get rid of the coefficient of x squared if you can when you factor, or just put it aside somehow. And we can put it aside, whoops, that should be a 50. We can put it aside by just you know factoring out um, a negative 5. And actually this should be a negative 10. So to be sure that you did it correctly, you can always just distribute back like this. That's what I just did in my head to make sure that it's correct. And now we just factor the resulting term. What two numbers multiply to negative 10 and add it to negative 3? Well, that's going to be negative 5 and positive 2. So that is now <clears throat> intercept form. So now we're going to convert to uh, vertex form. And to do that, we're going to start out with the original expression. Um, starting out with standard form is the easiest way to do it. And to convert to uh, vertex form, you have to complete the square. But we can't complete the square unless we get rid of this coefficient here. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. Then we get x squared minus 3x minus 10. And I'm going to add 10 to both sides of the equation. And now we're ready to complete the square. But what you're going to find is that the numbers are not going to work out so well in this problem. Um, remember, in order to complete the square, you have to take the coefficient of x squared, which is negative 3 in this case. You have to divide it by 2 and then square it. But the problem is negative 3 divided by 2, that's just 3 halves. And if you square that, um, that's just negative 3 halves times negative 3 halves. And when you're multiplying fractions, remember, you just multiply straight across. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 2 times 2 is 4. So it'd be 9 fourths. And negative, negative times a negative is a positive, so it's just going to be 9 fourths. This is all basic math. A lot of times in intermediate algebra courses, they don't even show you that. They just expect that you know that. 
because again arithmetic is a prerequisite for this course so I'm going to add 9 fourths to both sides and now this is a perfect square <clears throat> Now again, I, I, just to be clear, you cannot just add a number to an equation. It doesn't. It, it changes the equation. It makes it to where it's not true. You have to add it on both sides. That's why we did it on both sides. Now at this point, we have to factor this expression, but you may uh, notice that it looks a little intimidating there. I mean, how are you going to factor that? It's got a fraction. Well, remember, this number here is always going to be the coefficient of x divided by 2. So you don't really even have to think about it very much. You just divide by 2. So it's just going to be 3 halves. That's that number. And now we have 10 plus 9 fourths. Now there's a lot of different ways to add this together, but I'm just going to write 10 as 40 over 4. So remember, this is just considered to be 10 over 1. Any whole number can be written as over 1. Then I'm going to use the fundamental principle of fractions, multiply both sides by 4 to get 40 over 4. And now we can add 40 over 4 plus 9 over 4 is 49 over 4. This is all just basic math review. Okay, so now we're going to change this to power notation. And as you can see, we really only have one more thing to do. We have to get the y by itself. And so we're going to subtract that fraction from both sides. x minus 3 half squared. And then minus 49 over 4. So I put the fraction on the other side. And now we just have to multiply both sides by negative 5. So just to be clear what's going on, I'm going to rewrite and show that step. We don't usually show basic pre-algebra problems or basic pre-algebra steps like this, but it's so crucial that you understand what's going on here. I'm going to show this step. So we're going to get rid of that negative 5 by multiplying both sides by negative 5. So we get y is equal to negative 5 x minus 3 halves squared. And then we have to multiply 49, negative 49 over 4 by negative 5. So we can just multiply, again, that's negative 5 over 1. We just multiply negative 5 times 49 and 1 times 4. So that's be positive uh, 245 over 4. Now you can change that to a mixed number, but in algebra um, teachers don't really care if you do that. It's not really necessary. So that is vertex form. Okay, so let's try one more of these before you try some on your own. Now this problem is going to be a lot easier because the coefficient of x squared is only 1. Um, but first let's identify the form that we're already in. We're in standard form. And now let's convert to uh, intercept form. Um, converting to intercept form is going to be really easy. We don't have to factor anything. Well, we're going to factor. We just don't have to factor a greatest common factor, that is. What two numbers multiply to 9 and add up to 10? Well, it's going to be 1 and 9, and there you go. That is intercept form. So now we're going to convert to vertex form, and remember it's easiest to start with standard form whenever you convert to vertex form. There are other ways to do these problems, but these ways are going to be best when it comes to you understanding the curriculum. And so now we take the coefficient of x, which is 10, divided by 2 and square it, and we add that to both sides. So we're adding 25 to both sides. Now this is a perfect square, so we can factor it. What two numbers multiply to 25 and add up to 10? Well, that's just going to be 5 and 5. 
negative 9 plus 25 is 16. We can change this to power notation. And then we're just going to put the 16 on the other side. So we have x plus 5 squared minus 16. And that is vertex form. So that problem was a lot easier because, again, the coefficient of x squared was 1. All right, so I'm going to leave some of those problems in the window, and I want you to try number 16. So go ahead and try number 16, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So let's first identify the form. This is standard form. And um, then we're going to convert to... Uh, intercept form and to do that we're going to factor out a GCF greatest common factor you may not be able to factor out a greatest a GCF a greatest common factor in every problem but in these particular problems I'm giving you you will be able to do that um, and so now we're going to factor what's left inside there because we have a quadratic. What two numbers multiply to 5 and add up to 6? That's going to be 5 and 1. So that is intercept form. Okay, so now we're going to convert to a vertex form. I forgot to label that step uh, that step, the purpose of that was con to convert to intercept form. So now, next step, we're converting to vertex form. And so, it's easiest to start with standard form. And to uh, convert to vertex form, we have to complete the square, but we can't do that if we have a coefficient on the x squared term, in this case, negative 3. So we have to get rid of that negative 3 by dividing both sides by negative 3. And notice how I showed the step. I didn't just show the result after performing the step, because I want you to be absolutely clear what's going on. And Whoops, that should be 5. So now we're going to complete the square. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. And um, how do we complete the square? We take the coefficient of x, divide by 2, and square it, and then we get 9. Uh, whoops, I'm going to rewrite that step. Sorry. I guess I don't need that space in this part. So now we're ready to complete the square. So we're going to add 9 to both sides. And now over here you can see we have a perfect square. So what two numbers multiply to 9 and add up to 6? Obviously, that's 3 and 3. And we can combine the negative 5 and 9, and we get positive 4. And we're out of room, but that's OK. We can just go up here. So y over negative 3 plus 4 is equal to. And we're going to change that to power notation. So we have x plus 3 to the second power. Okay, so now we just have to get y by itself. We have to isolate y. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 3. But I have to be really careful when I do this. I want you to understand what exactly is happening. As you can see, we're out of room, so I'm going to have to move this over a little bit. Sorry about that. And 
again, you, it's very important to understand you're multiplying the entire expression over here So now we get y is equal to negative 3 x plus 3 squared plus 12. And that is vertex form. All right. So if you got that answer, good job. Again, we started in standard form. We converted to intercept form. Then we converted to vertex form. All right, try number 17, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So first, we're going to identify the form that we're given, and that's obviously standard form. That's the form that the problem was is in from the very beginning. Now we're going to convert to intercept form. And... You know, you don't have to do it this way. There are other ways to do it, but I'm just going to factor out a greatest common factor because it turns out this problem, turns out in all these problems, we do have GCFs, greatest common factors. And again, if you're if you're worried that you didn't factor properly, you just multiply back and see if you get to um, this original expression here. And so now we're going to factor what we have left when we take the four out what two numbers multiply to 15 and add up to negative 8 that's going to be negative 5 and negative 3 so that is intercept form now we're going to convert to vertex form to do that we need to start with the original expression and uh, we need to complete the square, but we can't complete the square to, to convert to vertex form if we have a coefficient on the x squared term. So we're going to have to get rid of that coefficient by dividing by 4, and we get x squared minus 8x plus 15 is equal to y over 4. And before we complete the square, we have to get rid of this 15, or just move it over somehow. I'm just going to get it on the uh, on the other side of the equation. And now we're ready to complete the square. But what number do we add to complete the square? Well, remember, we always take the coefficient of x and divide by 2 and square it, and we get 16. And if I add it on one side, I have to add it on the other side. It's very important to understand this is now a perfect square. That's why we did that. So if you factor it, if you ask what two numbers multiply to 16 and add up to negative 8, you can see that uh, the numbers have to be negative 4 and negative 4. Negative 15 plus 16 is 1. And now we can change the product of binomials to a power expression. And the hard part is over. We're out of room though, so need to make an arrow. Going all the way up here. We have x minus 4 squared equals y over 4 plus 1. Now we have to just isolate y and then we'll be done. So first we're going to put the 1 on the other side of the equation. <laughs> And then we just have to multiply both sides of the equation by 4. So I'm going to rewrite just to be sure that you know what's going on on this step. And on the left side of the equation, we just have to use the distribution property. So we're going to multiply 4 times x minus 4 squared and also 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. And the 4's cancel out on the right side of the equation. And we're left with vertex form. So if you got that answer, good job. Uh, I'm 
I'm going to leave number 17 in the window and I want you to try number 18 uh, and when you're done we'll attempt it together so go ahead and try number 18 all right we're back so first we'll identify the form we're in we're in standard form and that's part of the answer so we're going to rectangle that then we're going to convert to intercept form <clears throat> that's going to be really easy because we don't really have a coefficient on x on the x squared term so what two numbers multiply to 14 and add up to 9 that's 7 and 2 so that is intercept form very easy now we're going to convert to vertex form and to do that we're going to start with standard form that's just the easiest way to do it and we don't have a coefficient on the x squared term so this is going to be a lot easier than some of the other problems so now we're ready to complete the square The problem is this is an odd number, so that's going to make things a little more difficult. So remember, you take the coefficient of x, divide by 2. So 9 divided by 2, we can just write as 9 halves. And then if you square that, you get 9 halves times 9 halves. 9 times 9 is 81. 2 times 2 is 4, so 81 over 4. That's the special number that we need to complete the square. So plus 81 over 4, plus 81 over 4. Now, uh, we need to add these together. Um, 14 is the same thing as uh, 56 over 4. Again, I just wrote 14 as 14 over 1, and then multiply both sides by 4. Now we have a common denominator, so we can add those, and that's going to be... Um, 25 over 4 it looks like so we have y uh, plus 25 over 4 and over here we have a perfect square um, and it's going to be kind of hard to factor this because we have a fraction but remember this number that goes here is always just the coefficient of x divided by 2 so that's just going to be 9 over 2. Now we change to power notation over here. And we can just put that 25 over 4 on the other side. <clears throat> and at that point, we're done. This is now vertex form. Maybe I should move it over a little bit. So if you got that answer, good job. And that was the class today. If you'd like to take screenshots of all the work that we did to help you with your homework or to study for tests, you would go ahead and do that now. Here's screenshot number one. And screenshot number two. And screenshot number three. And screenshot number four. And number five. And number six. And number seven. and number eight. But don't go before you get your homework. Let's take a look at the homework. Here's the homework. Get a screenshot of this first page. There's 12 problems. And here's the answers. 
Remember, if you don't do that homework, you're going to learn nothing in this entire course. So get that homework done, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next class.